let's let's get down to first things first. Uh, we've been poisoned, but before we deal with poisoning, I'm gonna eat this frog before it goes off. Uh, hey, this works. There you go. Uh, anyway, welcome back to Trans Gaming with Tracy Campbell. Um, during the cutscene, we were shot with an arrow. And actually, it's funny, if we don't remove this arrow, it will remain in our character ball for the entire rest of the game. We can have like up to 60 arrows, and we'll just look like a pincushion walking around this thing. But uh, we can just remove it, and then that's it dealt with. Like it said, it's still a wound, but wounds are good, because you heal from them a bit stronger than ever. Serum, that's that taken care of. Bada boom, bada bing. Now we're ready to deal with the actual game. Now, the fear. He is, there's a, all kinds of tactics to him that I've never really used, like, you can, like, for instance, if you wait a couple of days out of character, if you wait a couple of days, the, the dead animals that you're carrying around will start to rot, and throughout the fight, he will uh, use stamina in order to use his invisib invisibility power, um, so he'll drain his own stamina bar, it won't cause him to be knocked out, obviously, because he's, he's not completely on tactical in that matter, that he would cause himself to lose by being invisible that long. But your food will begin to rot and become poisonous. He'll get and if you throw it out, like he will scavenge around for food and kill animals just like you would. So it's a bit of a survivalist versus survivalist this fight. So there's a whole angle of that. So if you throw out poisonous foods he will just pick it up and he'll have a bit of a go at that and it'll poison he'll have food poisoning. So that's a tactic people will use. I'm, I'm lying. No one will ever use that tactic because this tactic exists. Uh, I am not lined up right. There's a specific easy way. Fuck, where's the tripwire? Give me a second. No, go away. Here it is. I think this is it. This isn't the exact spot, but. We'll work it out. So I took its fake death pill. The revival pill is in Snake's tooth. So we just gotta chew on it when our enemies drop our guard and assume that I'm dead. He's not signing in the right place. Okay, now he's turned his back. What we've gotta do is stun grenades then. Fuck. Oh fuck, I was so close. No. Ah. Ah, uh, I'll take that. If you eat something, I won't take that. There you go, one shot. Um, I almost took him out there, but my aiming went a little bit askew because of the recall that I couldn't account for because I myself was blinded by oh, song grenades. Yeah. So the little exploit there means that by using the stun grenade, we set him up to take non-lethal damage from the stun grenade, but while he's still in his stun frame, any lethal damage he would take instead becomes non-lethal damage, and he can't go into his invincibility frames because he's still in his stunned woozy frames. So he is completely vulnerable, and just by spraying him with bullets, uh, we've got his uniform there, but just by spraying him with bullets you cause him to take just unholy amounts of non-lethal damage without flinching away from it. And he's just taken out that way. I think the easiest out of that would just be to make it so that when he's stunned you can't take any damage. That's probably what they would have done, but... Instead they give him a bit of a longer animation so it becomes highly exploitable. So yeah! That was the fear. But well, now we've got his thing. It doesn't turn us completely invisible, Frank, sadly. But... Um, it does boost our camo automatically to 80 if it would be lower than that. For some reason this was developed in the UK. That's important for us to know as it was developed in the UK. It doubles the natural life recovery rate. What? Huh. Anyway, uh, it, it gives good camo and if your index is lower than 8, it ups it to 8 automatically, which is pretty good. Pretty nice. Pretty unique in that way. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I just took care of that boss nice and quick. It would have been even clearer if I'd managed to get him into the uh, trap so that the weight would have come down and hit him. But we can't always have everything be too clean. Gotta 
Gotta get our hands in it. No one's here. Don't go, go away. I can't see who it is that sees me. It's just a slight issue with visibility in, in this game. Which just completely goes the opposite direction for Phantom Pain when you're used to the controls and you just mark everybody and you know where everybody is. Okay, so he's taken out. So, in this supply closet. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Where are the thermal goggles then? Oh. Oh fuck, if I actually, if I don't have the thermal goggles, this next boss fight is going to become infinitely more frustrating now I think about it. I know where they are. I know where they are, I just have to go get them. Huh? Hello friend. <laughs> Goodbye friend. First things first, that thing over there, I don't remember what it is, but I want it. So it's going to drop down on this. <coughs> A what? I didn't know you were there, asshole. Oh. A suppressor. Handy dandy. Ha! Should have called an asshole, then you would have won. But you didn't, so now you have lost. Okay, desert face. Bandage. Okay. I might cut this, but then again, it might be useful for you to know where the thermal goggles are because I didn't take out the end. I reset after taking out the end that way, so I'll have to find them legit, which means that the thermal goggles will be your best friend. Hmm. There we go. Oh my god. I can't believe I complained about fucking Phantom Pain. Initially it was hard for me. That was just because I was control. Phantom Pain is so much easier than this because whenever anyone sees you, the game just, just goes into matrix bullet time for a second and gives you all the time you need to line up a headshot with her as it saw you. And you're just home clear at that point. Like, it just trains you to be bad. Well, I won't blame the game entirely, but... Yeah, MGS5, you don't need to worry about stealth or nothing. You just gotta go about your business, so... Uh, if I go to all the extent of looking for these thermal goggles where I think they are, there's a couple of places it could be. It could be in this area, or it could be two areas away from here. But I'll have a wee look for them first before I move on. There is always nice things to find out that suppressor that I'm not going to use because it's for the handgun that kills people. I prefer the handguns that don't kill people, thank you. Thank you, can I get that? <coughs> well, frankly, firing a bunch of tranquilizers into these people would probably be lethal at some point. I mean, you got professional anesthesiologists or whatever they're called working in hospitals to make sure people don't overdose on these things, you know? Blah 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 blah. You know, it's a very, it's a very careful science when it comes to anesthesia. I've not managed to sneak through a single area thus far. I keep getting seen every time. I'm so incredibly rusty at this game. It isn't even remotely funny. Well, it's funny but, well, for some of you, I'm sure, but... God. Wait, I'm gonna. Uh, I'll take this as a practice run. Like I said, my little sister is gonna sit on us doing a long play of this later. Once I finish this run, and but at least by that point, I'll be taking things. I'll be used to taking things slowly, anyway, because I'll be sitting there for cutscenes and stuff, and I'll I'll have tempered my patience to take things nice and slow and be patient with stuff. There you go, I can still do the headshots. It's not there. Am I going to actually look this up? Oh my god. <gasps> no, that's where it is. It was behind the barrels in that other area. Fuck. Excuse me. I just got bit by a spider.
Fuck you, spider. Try and lethally poison me. It's fine, it regenerates. Everything regenerates. Everything stays. More suppressor! Like, holy shit. As soon as I complain I don't get it, I'm suddenly getting it in spades. But not the thing I'm actually looking for. Okay. Um, I've pretty much cleaned out this area of the places where it could be. Food is full. I might as well clear out this food. You want to eat food that you caught at the earliest points. Not too bad. First of all, so that other stuff doesn't rot. Hmm. I can't get to that laser. There's nothing over there anyway. Alright. So the only place it could be left, like, oh, this is a great let's play. I just spent like five minutes looking for something that a proper pro, like, looking Sarah typed on her blog. She went ahead and she typed in, hey guys, come follow Tracy uh, doing a let's play. She's so much better at video games than me, and that everyone knows how bad I am at everything in video games. Why am I making video games? I certainly can't play video games. This is why I'm making video games. I'm making video games that are easy enough for me to play and be good at. When uh, Princess Stealthy vs. the Troublesome Witch, the real game that I am really making as part of my class, when that releases it will be the easiest goddamn stealth game ever, and I'll just be like, yeah, I'm the queen of stealth, and you'll be like, what is this? Was this designed for three year olds? I'm like, yes, actually. Why else would I call it Princess Stealthy vs. the Troublesome Witch, like out of some fucking anime for three year olds? It's weird entering this area during the daytime. I've never done that before, probably. Uh Hmm All right, everyone's dead. Great. But he managed to call in at least enough for them to be like, why'd you stop calling? Ha! <laughs> oh my god, that was fucking perfect. And technically, I didn't kill anybody. Because like I said, it doesn't count as a kill. There it is. No, it's not it! Oh, what? Where is it then? Ah. Oh. I swear, if I have to fight the end without thermal goggles, this is gonna. I'm gonna be here for like two hours. I swear it was here. I've run out of places for it to have been. This is great. Maybe I picked up without realizing it, and I'll just look around for it, and there it'll be. Whatever, I don't have it. I'll live with that. Maybe there's another instance of it that I can pick up at some point. Oh well. Huh. <laughs> Double back for five minutes looking for something I couldn't find. That's just great. Alright, so after we talked to it, to recap on where it is that we're going, in case. Okay, so Sarah got lost. So just double back to this warehouse, uh, to the place before you fight. The, uh, the, uh, the fear, uh, which is also before you f go into the lab. So just double back entirely along the same path you went. Just go south. Like I said, just press R3 and I'll switch you between. Like, this is a subsistence camera because there was a second release of this game before the HD where they added the proper camera controls and a bunch of special features. And this is what they originally shipped up in like 2004. The snake eater camera where everything it usually points north or where you have to go or where you'd only be able to see. So by default it'll point to north and you can show that about it just a little bit. So just uh, just come south again. Yes, you double back in tally, come south and then just go down this alternate a door that's in front that's the side of the door you actually come in and just go up these stairs. Uh, I'm so sorry, like I'll I'll you know what, I'll, I'll put in the video description, if I can, uh, if I remember to. I will remember to, it's just a matter of me finding it. Oh, shut up. It's a matter of me, I'll try and put in the video description a link to where you can find the thermal goggles, because it is 
somewhat imperative. We haven't reached the point yet where we're, you're unable to double back entirely, so that's good. There's a couple of areas we've got to go through before we encounter the end, at least. So there's a chance I could get Final Goal or something else that could help us. It's like a Zelda boss or whatever, like I was saying earlier. Like, you can find things that overcome them, but it's not necessarily in the same place where you find it. So, like, if you're a huge uh, Link to the Past fan, you might be into that. I'm still in the sake of your camera. I was like, why does it look weird? I saw a rabbit there or something. <gasps> rabbit! Nope. Yeah! It's okay, it was a tranquilizer. And now I have my lucky rabbit. It's in my cage. Can I catch these butterflies? No, nah, they're unresponsive. Probably not. I think there's a weird particle effect. Must be weird. Your entire existence as a butterfly is a, a particle effect. In Japan, butterflies symbolize dreams because of some quotes like, what if all this was just in the dreams of a butterfly? So like, blue and butterfly form symbolism of illusions, which is the ethos of the movie Perfect Blue. Which is terrifying. And no one told me it's terrifying. Little Kirby uploaded some fucking joke video that I didn't get at the time. We made it out as being some like uh, bloody romantic comedy or something to the tune of My Sharona. My Sharona, do 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 do. And it, it seemed like fun. The, but the joke was it wasn't fun. If you knew anything about it, you wouldn't think it was fun. But I was like, I, fuck. Oh man, I'm getting old. Like I was like an impressionable like 13 year old at the time, and I thought it was just gonna be some fun movie and where maybe get to see some movies. No, no, no. You do not see me. No, no, no. I'm Snake. Go, go, go. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd be able to see some boobies. Um, but no, they're not positive boobies. They're very negative boobies in that movie. Don't watch Perfect Blue unless you're prepared for that psychological horror stuff. In fact, psychological horror as a whole is kind of a trash genre. Like, it's built on societal fears. I just didn't encounter any guards here just because... I don't really know where the guards are specifically in this area, I just have a rough idea of where they would be placed and you just gotta boost up yourself, kinda like... Really, I should be like, equipping binoculars and looking around and plotting my route, but whatever. Like, that's something you do your first time. When you're a pro like me, you don't need to know where the enemies are, you just... You just use your sheer wits to navigate. Anyway... Yeah, so I'm talking shit about survival horror now. I made a Tumblr post about that. Follow my Tumblr at uh, tracyalexander.tumblr.com, transgaming. It's good stuff. I, it's mostly 99% like reblogs and 0.9% uh, fem rage. Huh? No! Nobody! Yeah. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Come on. Let that count. <laughs> fuck me. All you shouted was, who's that? And you instantly extrapolated that to mean that there was someone there. Go, go on your tiptoes. Can you go your tiptoes? I don't think you can, bitch. Oh, fuck me. Oh. Shut my mouth and they do have the snare traps where you can encounter regular enemies. I forget about this bit because you fight the end just after this little session here. And he takes up so much time that everything that comes between him and the fear I instantly forget, like I don't remember there's it, you know, between those two bosses. I could use the hornet's nest. Yeah, let's use the hornet's nest. Because I promised I would make use of the special camo, so... Uh, we got the hornet strike from the pain, and we got the spider from the fear. It's not very good camo for this area, but whatever, we're just going to use for a special effect to tame hornets. That's what we need it for. And I got plenty of suppressor now. I can probably make the suppressor last to the game now. So now they won't attack me, they will instead gather around me and attack whoever I want them to. Which is basically anyone that isn't me. But now we get to hear the cool caution theme. Super Bunny Hop did a big analysis of this the whole thing. You got this, these different musical elements. Like it's interesting. I I would watch Super Bunny Hop's uh, video on MGS3 if I if you haven't seen it. It gets a good breakdown of all the themes in this game between the narrative dissonance and the tone of like being this overwrought campy melodrama, 
but also being able to hit those dramatic moments when it really needs to in terms of like the ending and to oh my god ha ha the bee saved me now I see what his deal was the fear was a man that worked it out how it all worked out oh my god no nobody shut up fuck are you kidding me I was going to sneak in that house over there and get the best weapon in the game I can't believe this. I can't believe it because for me. I'm not resetting because fuck that. If I just switch my uh, uniform real quick after using that hornet's nest, it'd be fine, but no. We'll just use pure violence. The hornets return to me! Help me, children. Come on. Oh my god. These shields have knocked the fuck at me. Oh my god, the game's lagging now. It doesn't know what to do. You know what? I know what to do. Oh my god, these shields are impossible. I don't really have a solution to them except to just stand back and shoot their legs. Which I guess is what I'll do. Here we go. That's the only reason they come in here. It's cool how you can hear their footsteps overhead. I like that. Man, I'll be upset if the captures crash because it's been it's been on for an hour. I've not had it turned on this long before, and if it's crashed, I'll be so upset. Ah, oh, what if my computer's going to screen there? What if that affects it? I mean, it probably won't, but you never know, you know? Technology. I work with it all day. I'm very tech-oriented, and yet I still don't trust technology at all. Let's pull up the map here. Oh, okay. Huh. Alright. That's a very useful map for me, because I can't read maps. I was in orienteering. Oh, fuck my ass. Why didn't I change up the hornet stripe? I don't even have the fucking fly for me anymore. Actually, I think it's time to whip out the big guns. We don't need this anymore. Because we have the M63. What's the M63? It's the Bramble gun. You hear the sound of snake giving a battle cry when you hold down the where about I just demolished that door. The game is slowing down because of my sheer pectoral strength of my life. Oh my god, I'm about to die. Luckily, I have plenty of life medicine. Well, not plenty, but I have some. Uh, is it worth even... Uh, you don't get... How, that's how you take out the shield, guys. Just be patient and you switch into first person mode and shoot in the leg. I'm never going to get out of here unless I actually... Okay, here we go. Spider. Cover health quicker and you're pretty much invisible. So it's all good. Yeah, the game slowed down then that we're shooting this massive gun. I guess it's doing calculations for all those bullets after all, right? So yeah, um, if ever I was doing a no kills run, that's out the window. <laughs> oh my god. Oh right. I forgot this fucking thing actually drains stamina, but you know what, we loaded up. We loaded the fuck up. Uh, we got plenty of things to eat. Eat. Hey, this works. Big guy Trevally. This is horrible. Did I actually lose stamina because of how bad a fish that was? Uh, mm -hmm. 
It says it's supposed to boost life recovery, but I my mean, life's going down. I guess they shot me. Oh. Oh, I was looking at a completely wrong camo then, I guess, earlier. Yeah, that's more in keeping with what I know about it. Was it DPM that recovers things faster? Huh. Okay. I was looking at a completely wrong <laughs> fucking thing earlier. Sorry, guys. I don't know how that fucking happened. Well, I do know what happened. I think it's because... Ah, oh, never mind. Well, I do know it's because I had equipped a DPM. So, as I went into the status of the thing, it wasn't giving me the status of the spider camera that I hovered over. It's giving me the status of the DPM camera that I'd already equipped. That's a bit of a design flaw. Anyway, we're on our way to recovering health nice and good now. Uh, I think there's only one way out of this area, so just take that way. Oh. Oh, now that we're out of intrusion view, I can see more. But it still looks like there's only one way out, so... Just got double back, I guess. You don't need too many advantages, so kind of sit here and wait out the caution. I guess I'll make the fight with the end a separate video. That way I could just do the sneaky thing. Like if all else fails, if you ta if you just get so frustrated with the end, he can't even be bored anymore. Just start, just go into the fight with him. Like he's the only and only for fight. Like he's this is the end for you, but like he's the one in the clock here. He's the one. He is a very old man. Okay. He has somehow found a way to extend his life. We'll get more into that when I play MGS5, but he has found a way to extend his life by just entering some comatose near-death state. He's over a hundred years old because he knows how to like, ration life itself. And he's using the remainder of his life just to fight you, specifically. So there's times where he does off in the middle of the fight just to make sure he doesn't run out by the end of it. Because, as a sniper it's a retracted battle of wits and attrition. Um, so yeah, we've got that element. What the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah. So, but like, it, he, he shoots tranquilizer darts. He doesn't shoot anything lethal. He shoots tranquilizer darts. And if he kicks your ass, he'll just come over and pick up your body and put you back like 10 minutes worth of walking. Which is frustrating. It's more frustrating if he just game over to you and you just had to go fight him right then and there, I guess. Um, I guess he doesn't want to kill me. I guess he's merciful. There's not really any explanation why he'd be merciful beyond, I guess, he's a bit of a hippie. But you can only really infer that from his love of nature, not because he's peace loving in a particular way. Unless the boss like men on the plan, I guess. We don't really get much of an idea of his character beyond the fact that he loves his part. Which is a thing. Huh? What? Why? Who's that? Why would a person be there at that point? No. 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 Bye. That's like the one. That's like the area that. Like, I promise I'll be stealth here, but that's the area of the game that I know the least about. The stretch of uh, space between the fear and the end. For some reason, I always just rush through it because I know the end will take so long, I guess. And we gotta keep our eyes peeled. I've actually watched this. I don't think the cutscene gets any particular hint to his initial starting position. That's any unique in any way, but. This guy, he's got a snake crawling over him. He's a chill anyway. So he's a very old man. He's one with nature. He's part tree. Except not really. Because it's the work of parasites. Ugh. The bird landed on him or turned his soul to him. I think that's what happened. Ugh. Trigger warning eyes. I beg of you. Grant me the strength to take this final prey. I guess he's just savoring it, like he doesn't intend Let to kill me at all. Oh my god. This world His prayers are being answered by a highly concentrated sunbeam. I have already slept enough for one lifetime. Wow. Eternity. You have my thanks. 
rather philosophical dude, aren't you? I respect I this guy. Thank you for waking me. If you hadn't shown up, my sleep would have been eternal. So he just remains asleep until his pirate comes in and alerts him that there's someone that he has to go hunt, I guess. Do you hear me, Snake? Snake isn't capitalized, he's just calling I me a snake. I am the end. The end is capitalized. I am here to send you to your ultimate. Don't look in that corner, there's no one there. You'll make a fine quarry for my final hunt. Alright. Ugh. So next time on Grumpcade, um, Trans Gaming is going to take down the end. What time is it? Hang on. I've done any programming work for like fucking five days, but I like earned a break, I guess. But still, I feel like such a lazy Susan. Lazy Susan? That's an actual thing. We're... Anyway. Uh, next time. Um, I'm gonna give myself a half hour to beat the end. And if I can't do it, I'm just gonna turn in for the night. So, I guess I won't bother uploading that if I do. I don't really have enough topics to talk about. I should, I should probably limit these recording sessions to when I have enough things to talk about. But whatever. If you want to see me talk, you can follow my Tumblr at the fucking Trace, you can't, Tracy Alexander at Tumblr.com. Whatever. Just plugging myself. I'm plugging myself. Also follow uh, Sergio Rex at Tumblr.com, who probably linked you here. Because uh, she is one foxy lady. Make sure you come back as soon as you can. Bye, everybody. Hey, she didn't give me a fucking story.